Manchester United now has a new CEO. His name is Omar Barada. I did a shot yesterday, but today I just want to expand on that. And I want to tell you guys my view as a United fan. And I want to know your view as a United fan. Hello, guys. Welcome to the channel. My name is Rob Dukan, a Manchester United fan just like you. We basically every day talk about Manchester United, exchange our opinions with you guys who are the star of this community. So if you're into it, make sure you start by liking the video and also drop your comments below and subscribe because this is what we do. So, but, you know, yeah, uh, this morning I got up and um, I did a very quick short trying to insist on the fact who Omar Barada is. And uh, I was asking you guys your opinion, what you think about that. But guess what? Yesterday we had this uh, tweet online, which nobody knew about it. Nobody. The biggest Manchester United fan groups, the, 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 I mean, the journalists, the, the ESPN, the, the talk sport, none of them knew about this. United just came out with a scoop. And who did that? It was nobody but David Onstein. That exclusively, that Manchester United named City Omar Berada as new CEO led uh, by the Inos with um, the backing of the Glazers. The reason why I'm reading this to you guys with the backing of the Glazers is because I've had some chat with some of my friends. Well, they're not based in, Lo in, uh, in Manchester, in London, actually. They're United fans. And they were like, oh, the Inos is going to like show the Glazers how, like, show the Glazers how to manage football. Inos is going alone. Guys, just forget about that. The Glazers own over 50%, I think roughly 53 or so percent of the club. They will always work hand in hand with uh, Enos because Enos has given them a, a, a lifeline. Let me put it this way, how to make more money. So uh, they will always work together basically. So yeah, so who is this guy? This is a guy which has started his career from grass. I mean, he has played, he has worked as a chief sponsor. Uh, so um, uh, and sponsor, and sponsor in Barcelona. He has worked before there with smaller clubs when nobody knew about him. He, he was brought to Manchester City, actually. He was brought to Manchester City to be also chief football um, operational, uh, no, operation, uh, chief of operation in football, CFO, right? Chief football operator. So he's in charge on all football. On all the, he was not only for Manchester City, he had a portfolio of 13 football clubs owned by the City Group. City's Group, Manchester, they have a lot of football teams. That's how they kind of, um, that's how they, you, you you call it in in in, uh, in marketing something like the value flow of their player. So if you're a young player, you're doing well. City can can let you play for Australia for six months, bring you to Belgium, take you to the UK, and then maybe take you to the US. You can play in the UK if you're going to a retirement. You can play with the City franchise. So City has built one of the biggest network in football, and this guy understands very well. Is that a good news? Personally, I am over the moon that United have started has started hiring people who understand football like you and me. I mean, well, yeah, maybe we are not that technical. No, I work with football agents, but maybe we are not that technical, but at least we understand. We, we, we can easily determine who is a good player and who isn't. But this is what Glazers did. I told you guys last year on our Watch Along, when I was doing Watch Along on this uh, channel, that the biggest problem, the biggest down side of Manchester United. The guy who brought Manchester United to his new was Ed Woodward, a banker who never knew, who never knew it had in a football team the 11 players. This is a guy who has no clue. This is a guy who brought Sanchez. Let me just, uh, I mean, I regress. Let's forget about him. So when um, Austin said that, I was a bit worried. I said, let me go deeper. I thought it was just a joke. Then I went to and saw Fabrizio Romano came out with it that, yeah, Omar Berada has already signed the contract as a Manchester United CEO, leaving City with a media effect. So it is on, it's, um, I mean, he's there. He, is, he will work for Manchester United. He goes on and says, Berada wanted, the in, uh, wanted by Inos. He will have, all right, um, he have over role control of football and business. So he will be over, he'll be controlling the football and business, football slash uh, business uh, um, section of Manchester United. Berada will, will sit on the board and report to the owners. So this is, let me put it this way. You have admire Manchester City the way they have been operating. They haven't just been doing that. The success for you, City, the, let me put it, the, the three, the, 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 I mean, the success of City, right? has been built for the past 12 years, even before Pep Guardiola came to the team. United, we have been crying here as fans that we want a structure. The problem, we don't have a structure. Idiots, I mean, these are real idiots, who don't understand football. They understand football only when the ball goes behind the net. They just act, I mean, shouting. They're like, they we're giving up no value in the game. Football at the highest level needs 
elite management, not the coach. I mean, management in the process. That's why we do this so we can exchange opinion. But this is what I'm trying to remind you guys. So uh, who is this guy? This is bio. He's a guy which uh, let me go here and uh, you can get his bio here if you really want to, do, to know more about him. Um, so um, Omar, yeah, he is. Omar is 46 year old chief operating officer at Manchester City till last night. You know, where, you know, he's set to be confirmed in the next few days to take over Old Trafford. Yeah, he's understood uh, to be on uh, <coughs> gathering leave with Manchester City after resigning. So he's on a technical leave because he starts working with Manchester United in June. Yes, he might place all his de his demands. He put like, yeah, he can uh, actually um, write down what he expects from next season, but he will be officially a Manchester uh, working for Manchester United only next, only from June. Yeah. So this, it goes on to say that uh, the swap of the Paris born Moroccan is significant coup for understanding to be <coughs> the work of Jim Ratcliffe and his Ignos group who are pro in process of taking the 25% stakes. Uh, uh, they, identi they identify uh, Berada as their top target and move, uh, and the move was fully backed by the Glazers family. So this is the part I'm trying to tell you guys that it is the Glazers family they, that uh, the, the Inos won't do anything without the Glazers. This is just what I'm trying to tell you. So, uh, uh, what is your thoughts about Omar? Have you ever heard of this name? Honestly, I won't sit here and lie to you. I haven't ever heard of the name. And I've worked with a lot of um, uh, agents also in uh, sports. So, it goes on here. I just want to know what he has done. Like, uh, Omar, if he, what is written here about him? So, Chief Operating Officer, he has, that's his previous job. He was Chief Operating Officer for Manchester City. Uh, chief um, Operation Officer CF for Manchester City. Let me give you guys, if you are asking yourself, what Chief Operation Officer, what do they do? They are so vital. If you own an iPhone, this is a 14. If you own an iPhone, I want to tell you guys that Tim Cook was the Chief Operational Officer of, I of Apple. Maybe you guys have no clue. Tim, Tim Cook, who is now the CEO, he was the Chief Operation Officer. When you are Chief Operation Officer of an organization, <laughs> sorry guys i've been ill that's life my birthday then i'm ill when you're chief operation officer of another organization you know the in and out of that organization so that is why you see people who understand what i'm talking about they are excited that we are having someone who can who can manage the club properly who can um who can decide on getting football ideas in the club, not only making money. And one of the biggest things that really calmed me in this, uh, um, when this news break out today was when uh, I came back, uh, I heard what, my, what Berada said in regards to him coming to Manchester United, that they want to bring United, he wants to bring United, right, to where it belongs. In the sense that, I mean, most of you might not know uh, um, um, the Bosby Babes. Well, I, I I didn't know this. I wasn't I wasn't I was a kid, you know. But the Busby babe, that's what the, that's the first generation of manager who 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 managed Manchester United when United were really a top club. That was be far away before Sir Alex Ferguson became a, a, a big name for uh, not only in English football, not only Manchester United, but in world football in terms of management. So um, uh, I want to know what you guys think about this. Uh, um, Acquisition for Manchester United for me it's a signing. It's a signing. It's some, some 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 ask me why am I calling it a signing? It's not a player. You're signing players. This is a business. Manchester United is a business. The what the bad. I mean the strange thing is that most of you watching football, you look at football on the only on the pitch. But now football is a multi-billion. It's trillion billion trillion billion trillion dollar business now worldwide and. Um, you have to sign the best in class in order to be productive, the best in class in order to be, um, in order to get results for so people who know the process, people who understand what is needed, people who want to, uh, who can work with the manager. I have told you guys here, I'm trying to go a little bit away from this news that uh, well, some of you who want Ten Hag to be sacked because of the results. The, his biggest for those who want Ten Hag to stay, the biggest backing for Ten Hag is that we don't have a structure. And I think if we had Berada for the first five years and Ten Hag producing such a football, I think he wouldn't be backed by, by people who understand football, knowing that without a structure, you really can't uh, sustain um, uh, uh, positive. I don't want to say positive, you can't sustain victory for a long time. So, um, 
Is this a good thing for Ten Hag? Tell me what you think. But uh, I can tell you what I think. I think this is a fantastic um, news for Eric Ten Hag because he will be hard working with professionals. Because when you look at Eric Ten Hag, this is someone who is uh, someone we talk about Eric Ten Hag as if he's a manager who has no no clue. Especially those who who don't who don't really who don't have that critical thinking when it comes to football. Because Eric Ten Hag is someone who has not won a championship. You can say Eric Division is not a top uh, championship, but uh, the Dutch football has always been admired by the world worldwide. One of the best players in the history of the game is Marco van Basting, you know, Ruth Gullit, you know, Johan Cruyff, the, uh, who started all the uh, the Barcelona, Barcelona uh, you know, uh, way of play, you know, La Masia and so on. So uh, me, I know that uh, we have had some of the fans here talking about Ralph, why is that we are going all, we are wanting to buy only Dutch players, players from Holland or who have played on Holland team, in Dutch team. Is because Ten Hag doesn't have people in front of him that he can work and trust. So he doesn't, he, he is the guy who has to do everything. Moreno complained about that. Other managers who have come to Manchester United they have. But guys, I will end this video by telling you guys that uh, I'm so excited. I think this is a positive news. And um, yes, before I go, there some of you are asking if he can, he will be implicated by the 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 190 something count sorry uh, Man, uh manchester well, manchester city has you know they have an issue uh, i said on my shots that united uh, manchester city might be relegated because that's a rumor if they are found guilty for those charges they will be relegated they have no choice because now um financial uh on fffpp right uh financial con uh uh, f um, the FFPP rules now are very serious, and we uh, and the f most of the clubs are taking it serious. If you have noticed, there haven't been huge signings in this this January because of what uh, the Premier League has done to um, Everton, and uh, it soon will be Nottingham Forest and maybe Manchester City. Anyway, guys, I'm trying to cut this short because I always save your time. Please make sure you click the like on the video if you learned something in the video. Drop your comment below and subscribe. Stay tuned. Wonderful, wonderful video. Happy New Year. And yeah, see you in the next one.